summer festival, I felt like it was me in the beginning, because in the beginning you're excited and it's new, and you're feeling purification, and you have a family. Yeah? By the way, my mother is Russian. Oh. <laughs> Right next to George Harrison in the racing car. Her name is Celia Russica. So, of course, I have an affinity even more. Of course, we're not identifying with the body, but still, you know, we stick with our people and we speak the language. Even animals do that. They stick with their species. And it's natural. So my theory was that a lot of you join Krishna consciousness, one, because it's exotic, Navi Yoga, it's saris and colors and prashada and kirtan. By the way, where did that tune come from? Not a, was it a Ru Russian uh, folk tune? That's Aindra's Prabhu. Sorry? Aindra Prabhu. You, you did No, Aindra, Aindra. Aindra, Aindra. Aindra, Aindra. 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 I was in Vrindavan six and a half years, first time. But I never got to meet him. But of course, he's famous. So that's the thing, exactly. You absorbed this new culture. And we all know, okay, this person, you know, Vishnu John Swami, did the, all our great stories and the stories that I've been sharing about power, but of course, that's why we're all here together in the room, scientifically, objectively. And so, that was my theory that many of you joined Krishna consciousness because uh, it's personal. 
it's not some vindictive God looking down and not liking your sins. We have a playful God that's in our heart. And of course, Radha and Krishna, which means two. And this is, so this is a speciality. And um, I had a class the other day and I asked, these were newcomers, what do they like about Krishna consciousness? The second theory I had was that the philosophy is so deep. There's a proverb, a little learning is a dangerous thing, drink deep or taste not of the eternal spring. Meaning going deep into something, not surface. Oh, there's people jumping up and down in the street. No, you go deep, there's more to it than that. And the third theory was that many of you were in, under totalitarian regimes and just getting out of it was a great thing. I'm writing a short storybook, and one of the stories was one told to me about, I think the devotee was from Romania, I'm not sure, some Eastern European country. And he came across devotees, like I went with Pianishan, to Bulgaria, uh, Yugoslavia, at that time Czechoslovakia, not Czech Republic. Uh, and we, we put books into the libraries and preach. And so many, some of you might have come, come across us. I went to Czestochowa in Poland, maybe that way, but uh, so that's my theory, but the story is, his story was he was escaping to become a devotee and he, read to, he got to the border and it was a full moon night and he was running and it was a false border to fool people and then he ran and the real border was there and there were dogs. And I was in these countries too. I experienced some of the borders, yeah. And the dogs were kept hungry, so they would detect anybody coming across the border. But it was the World Cup, and the guards were watching the football match, and so they didn't hear him, and he was able to escape. So many of you were possibly under restrictive governments. And even now, I hope people are not prejudiced against you because of demonic politicians. I think a good car bumper sticker would be unimaginative administrators squash creativity. And that's the thing, there's the individual and the army, and the individual, great, even in China, I met so not many Chinese people, nice. So, but it's happening all over the world, and that's why we're in an oasis of Krishna consciousness. We, we have something to save us. How many of you have read uh, Tolstoy? Uh, to be. What does this mean? Tolstoy? Your own people? Yeah. It's two people. How many of you have read Chekhov? 
How many of you have read Pushkin? Okay. We studied that in school. <laughs> yes. So everyone, all of us. Good. I'm Except good. for him. How many of you <laughs> have seen the film, what was it called, Battleship? It's in Ukrainian and there's all the steps. No. There's some great Russian films too, Ballad of a Soldier, Battleship Potemkin, I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From Soviet Union. Yes. <laughs> did a very nice story. It's called How Much Land Can a Man Use? Because, see, at this point, 1863, across the board, it was the same time as the Civil War, the emancipation of the slaves in the United States. Mm -hmm. So, uh, some of the authors were going back to the land. They were uh, rebounding from the Tsarist area and then the Lenin, Stalin, etc. So some of the authors were going back to the land. So the story is how much land can a man use? He was a, he was a serf and he was free. So now he had a family and he accrued, accrued, got some wealth and uh, he heard about a tribe that would give you as much land as you can walk in a day. When the sun goes up and then the sun goes down. And he was he was now greedy. He had he had a nice wife and children and had a had a nice wife, but he wanted more. <coughs> so the tribe that would give this uh, land, they asked for a certain amount of money and they had a, a shovel at the beginning and they said you can walk, uh, get as much land as you want uh, until the sun goes down. So he started pacing off but he said well I want more over here and and he cut a dick and grow, well, but tell us that little pond over there and, and the sun was going up and then it was going down, going down. And he, oh, the sun's going down and he ran and he ran and he got back to the beginning where the shovel was and he had a heart attack and died. And so the tribe nonchalantly, because this had happened before, they took the shovel and dug six feet. So Tolstoy's answer was, how much does a man need land? Six feet. So we also don't need that much. And see, that's another thing. Many of you probably have come from simple living. And that's why uh, also, you were able to embrace Krishna consciousness. So now, if you don't mind, I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, I'll start around the room, but if you're shy, I'll start here. That's a true story. <laughs> Please tell me what attracted you to Krishna consciousness. Myself, everything started when I was about 10 or 12. And uh, well, it was basically my parents and my relatives. It started with bhajans, with Krishna stories, little leelos here and there. And then I started reading and uh, do, uh, reading some, trying to understand some philosophy. And then somehow, one way or another, Krishna was always in my life. And then at a certain point, I 
met the devotees in the city, they gave me a book and said, if you come here, we have no problems. That's the story. So you came across to Bodhi's yeah. first? Yeah. Okay. And what attracts me is the culture, the philosophy, the relationship. The Christian consciousness gives the meaning of, of, of my life, let's say. Yes, purpose. Yeah, purpose. Relationship, family, that means family. Exactly. We are a family. And the great family that Prabhupada did, of course, the idea of Das on the Das. In this modern marriage, uh, age, we, we're able to serve one another. What a phenomenon, I could save the world. Would, would you mind telling me, should we have a microphone for the other people? Is that possible? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll speak, speak a little louder. Good. Keep us keep. Uh, Everything that you mentioned, it's true. So uh, all the uh, things in uh, Krishna consciousness, they agree. But personally, me, I, would, uh, I was thinking, so what is the best uh, value of Krishna consciousness, especially for me? And I think that uh, this is a great philosophy. So this is the best philosophy in the world. What else? Christianity, Islam, uh, Judaism, so what else? So there is no uh, philosophy that equal to Krishna consciousness. This is the best philosophy. So that's what personally me uh, attracts. Uh, I agree. I was I was brought up Jew, Jewish, but reformed, they did liberal. And then I was in the civil rights movement and it all was on the back burner. But now I'm actually uh, meeting some rabbis and talking to them about the correlation of Krishna consciousness and uh, Judaism. But I have to admit you're right. Yes. Okay, would you? Uh, for me it's relationships and philosophy. Yes. Relationships and Philosophy. I came to to Rivoti, um, through the classes of one Ayurveda doctor, but after that, yeah, he came to our city, and uh, one friend of mine uh, invited me there, me and my wife, and we came once, and then again, 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 again. And then they uh, invited us to the temple, so very close and kind relationships with the others there. And uh, then, after some time, I uh, read a lot of and heard uh, the philosophy, and I realized that it's the best, really the best, and our philosophy is. Uh, different from others uh, religions. So really, about me, I hate religions <laughs> because religions make it worse. Because everyone tells our religion is the best, our uh, our God is the best, but our philosophy tells that the God is one and has many different names, and every religion. Uh, has the same way, so the same goal is the to love of God, yeah? So this is the goal of all religion. But I don't know why all religions are fighting with others. So that's why uh, I love this philosophy. Srila Prabhupada gave us the philosophy and style of love. Because so it's style of it goes deeper. Yes, much deeper than just religion. This is very stimulating for me because John Lennon, the Beatle, was given peace of chance, but he hated organized religion. Yeah. And if you break it down scientifically, my way is, what you're saying is, the are saying my way is the best way. And it causes separation. Even in our 
are sanders. And these sanders should be blurred. Like, oh, how many people are offering food to Krishna? How many people are chanting Hare Krishna? All those separations should be blurred in the name of going down to the soul, not the body. We don't identify. I totally agree with you that it could be constructive. And even in Krishna consciousness, we're in a fishbowl community and people might judge your standards, you might judge your standards. So you, so, and you got a question and it's good that you did, but when I was in Northern Ireland, they said, oh, we don't need it on television. We don't need another religion up here. <laughs> That's an Irish accent, it's supposed to. I said, well, we're not a religion, we're a way of life. Yeah. And you sure could use another way of life, because it's a war zone up here. It's like I punched him in the stomach on TV. He gave speech, but so we're a way of life. But uh, let me read something nice about the magnanimity of Krishna consciousness was just sent to me yesterday in a conversation. This is from Bhaktivinoda Thakur regarding this idea of separation. But see, there's more harmony than separation. So we want to be tolerant. So here's what Bhaktivinoda Thakur says. If one goes to another place of worship, one should think, the people here are worshiping my Lord, but in a different way. Because of my different training, I cannot properly comprehend this system of worship. However, through this experience, I can deepen my appreciation for my own system of worship. The Lord is only one, not two. Therefore, I offer my respect to the form I see here and pray to the Lord in this new form that he may increase my love for him in the form to which I am accustomed. Those who do not follow this procedure, but who instead criticize other systems of worship and who show envy, envy, hatred, and violence are worthless and foolish. The more, oops, sorry, the phone, Rebelled on me. Sorry, uh, it was just the last sentence. Okay, sorry. And for, the more we indulge in such useless quarreling, the more they betray the very goal of their own religious system. He was so tolerant. I loved his writing. We were on a walk, Prabhupada and I, just the two of us. And I like Bhakti even though Taiko's writing a lot because of this. It's magnanimity. It was a bhajan and nadi. And his, his language was poetic. And so we're on the walk, and I say to Prabhupada, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is my second favorite author. And Prabhupada says, Second? Because <laughs> every time I try to mm, the truth at all, he always busted me, as they say in early. Second? Again, Prabhupada, you read my mind. So, uh, he's my favorite. Uh, yours, oh, well, I love your writing, but it, it, in one sense, it's instructive, and his is epic and poetic and very magnanimous. And 
forgiving in Nisha Upanishad, forgive those. So Prabhupada says, yes, if I had one tenth of the of Bhakti you know, Thakur, I would be a great devotee. I don't know what word he was crying. And then as we walked on, there was a rat in the garbage can. And Prabhupada took his cane and went like that so the rat could be free. So yes, there's many pitfalls of religion. So again, what exactly, why are you separating Krishna consciousness from the general religions? Did, and did you say Arya Veda? Oh, uh, no, no, no. It was the first step. But, did, but you were studying Arya Veda? Uh, I attended the uh, classes. You, you, of Ayurveda. you still no, do? No, no, no. no. Just, it was just first step on the way to Krishna well, consciousness to Vedic philosophy. Good step. Yeah. So what differentiates Krishna consciousness from all the other? Oh, it's my style of life now. So it's okay. I have I have so many samskaras uh, from kirtas, from relationships, from um, I even don't can't imagine. How it could be the other way? Where do you now, live? Uh, now I'm living here in Toronto. No, do you live set in the temple or someplace? Oh, yeah, in the temple now. Oh. Okay, Mr. Kirtani, looking in your yeah. room. Uh, <laughs> why did you join uh, Christian consciousness, please? Nothing original. Philosophy is all. I had the. Uh, by the time I had many questions and I was very disappointed, especially in religions. I was 27 at the time and I was actually studying in a yeshiva, like a Jewish boarding school for three years. And they made me completely at ease to years. <laughs> yeah, well, there's, there's so many, there's some kind of dour. Anyway, but there's some good things. There's the rabbi, they were all waiting for him. He was like a spiritual leader, and they were all waiting, and there was a ritual time. That's the thing, you got to do it this time, and not that. At any rate, he didn't show up. And what he was doing, he was helping a pregnant woman whose husband abandoned her to go meet the rabbi. So it shows that sometimes life Overseas ritual. And I uh, experienced that sometimes in Christian consciousness in some ways, perhaps. So, time, place, and circumstance is something to incorporate in your life to enable you to navigate. It's challenging. Christian consciousness is also challenging, it's the razor's edge. Okay, sir, uh, why did you join Krishna Consciousness? Uh, I was mostly attracted by enthusiasm and sincere faith by some senior devotees who I was lucky to get acquainted with. What a good answer, yes. Prabhupada said enthusiasm is the backbone of Krishna Consciousness. Uh, do any of you know a devotee named Ananta Govinda? Ananta Govinda? He's the one who helped me with the photography book. He's from Russia. Yeah, Moscow, yeah. You know. Yeah. Photographer. Yes. Well, no, he does music. I do the photography. He does music and Maybe he's very talented. Well, see, that's a nice answer. And and you, please. 
Uh, Hare Krishna. Put the pen on yourself. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I, I was attracted by philosophy, I would say. And at the beginning it was more like karmic activities. My wife gave me lectures from a Russian devotee. He was essentially he massaged our philosophy to for like normal people. And he was talking a lot about education, how to be a good father, how to be a good employee, how to be healthy. He took all this, uh, those parts of the knowledge which kind of abstract God a little bit. And, uh, and I was attracted by it when it's not. But then later, like, listening to his lectures, I realized that uh, what he is uh, talking about is essentially everything is built by God for us and God loves us, right? God is behind everything. Krishna is behind everything, and uh, it was it was clear. So after some time, I started meeting devotees and kind of start chanting and, and dive deeper into that, and I realized this is the way of life. There's no other. Doesn't make sense to do anything else after I acquired this knowledge. Right, and do you work in Toronto? Or? Yeah, I work in Toronto. What is your work? I'm a software engineer. A what? A software engineer. I'm a software developer. IT. IT. Yes, I understand. <laughs> so many devotees IT. We were looking at some paintings in Barsan of Prabhupada and I and he said, um, mm -hmm. art means full belly. <laughs> so so he said if someone is surviving, they don't have time to look at the art. And if someone is starving, they, they can embrace Krishna consciousness. So feed everybody. So, I'm, it seems like so far all of you have had some freedom to pursue this. Have, in, have any of you come under totalitarian regimes and then escaped from that? You, you were all basically sort of free? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so everybody is being, at that age when co union collapsed and we, we, did, we didn't really experience that flavor of totalitarianism. So but, but, the, but the Russian devotees were, I met a devotee where they would inject something so he'd almost die and then revive him and they were torturing him and the, the devotees one devotee had books in a, in a coat like that, and he approached a person, and there was another devotee, you know, no, I've got books in my coat, you know. So all of that. So I guess, I guess you're, you were younger than some yeah. other people I experienced. Okay. So that's good. And you, please? My way to the Krishna star 15 years ago, ago. Uh, and first I learned Ayurvedic knowledge. And I... Did you say Ayurvedic? Ayurvedic knowledge. Oh. Uh, after this I realized that Ayurvedic knowledge more better for me uh, compared to another medicine knowledge. Because very detailed and, and very good me because I realized and I find the result immediately. For this reason, this first step. And next step, slowly, I start to learn Vedic knowledge, philosophy. Philosophy, first it was Bhagavad Gita. When I opened this book, I said, oh, my book, that's it. And because a lot of answer I find in this book, a lot of book. For this reason, this book, it's first book. Until now, of course, after this Srimad Bhagavatam, the best. First time when I read, I quickly read because I, I'm afraid maybe I die, die tomorrow. <laughs> I need to finish everything. A second, second time when I read, I read like like honey because it's it's very good very good yes. knowledge for me. I don't know the best. No, that's it. <laughs> um, great.
right answer as well. Do you also practice Hatha Yoga? Yes. Yes, I will. I can tell you the way you're sitting. <laughs> no, no. My wife is an Iyengar graduate. Iyengar, which is really an advanced type of Hatha Yoga from Tibet. And I do too. Yes, yes, my opinion is part, parts of the... Uh, yeah, there's nothing. It's a great marriage, Bhakti Yoga and... Yes. And, and, and Hatha Yoga. Because it tunes us up. Mm -hmm. And now the yoga studios are starting to take... We're doing kirtans and, and Bhakti Yoga and Hatha Yoga. Because it means connection. And you can, and, and you can to the warrior post waiting for a bus. I mean, <laughs> I, I do some asanas in a pool as well as some Tai Chi. Um, Is anything to be healthy, you know? Yeah. When we say we're not this body, it doesn't mean to, at the early days we were so renounced that men don't be healthy. Then how can you preach? Yeah. And it includes prashadam too, but not so much sugar and so um, Anyway, the prashadam here is good. It is. And so that's a good answer. Thank you. And please keep on pursuing that. And maybe, you know, you're all gurus too. So if you find some common grounds with I didn't hear the list, and uh, did you say it's difficult? No, first time was difficult, what, uh, lotus, lotus. Oh, yeah, well, you know. Good children, try and do whatever you need to do. Don't beat yourself up because I'm not doing this or that. Just try sincerely, you know. Sometimes time just restrains. <coughs> When I was serving 18 hours a day, I couldn't always do my rounds, but Prabhupada knew, you know, I was doing Sabre. And I said, there's three things, Shastra, Sadhana, and Sabre. So I started a charity to, to identify devotees who were in need, who were isolated and poor. And we do outreach all over the world. And I wanted to assist in living for devotees and then hospice and then Estrada. So I have a charity. So if, if you're any of you who are nurses or Ayurveda or anything, you might be interested in that because I want to do it every place in the world. And certainly in the Canada, I've been talking to Dr. Mark about that assisted living devotees in nursing homes who are isolated. Okay, now back to the program. That is the public. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very commercial. Okay, back to the program. Yes, please. Hare Krishna. I came to Krishna Consciousness with a knowledge, with a practical knowledge, which helps me to become better mother, better wife, better person and uh, studying that know I, I I found this knowledge is very practical and what attracts me the teachers who spread this knowledge their qualities because it's not just something um, like idea whatever they teach they live this way and this purity attracts me and when I met devotees I was attracted their qualities as well, and I wanted to become like they are. And uh, they were so unselfishness, spreading the um, knowledge, 
and it, I feel like my life start getting better because I was I realized myself like a mother um, in career but I feel like there's something missing deep inside in my heart and I start finding like I I, I was feeling like I become more happy and I found that my happiness doesn't depend on what's going on outside because like life was beautiful outside but nothing can feel like this outside things couldn't feel my heart and only this knowledge was very practical and I became happier, I became more enthusiastic and this enthusiasm drove me to spread this knowledge uh, through the people for people to become more happy, more happy in their life, their families, and to uh, fill this big hole in their lives. And uh, what keeps me in a <coughs> consciousness, it's a relationship, relationships with the devotees, because together we can read Bhagavad Gita, we can discuss it, and we can read Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and uh, we can apply this knowledge to our life and we can share this knowledge with the others. Hey. Uh, now, you should, now you should sit in this chair. <laughs> <laughs> that is a beautiful answer. I'm glad you, I'm glad you got that. There are so many things. Prabhupada said there's enough to pass it in your life, so don't put any more on yourself unnecessary practically. He told me to wear shoes. And at first I didn't wear shoes because it's a temple, Vrindavan. But, but I was looking for bushes with a little shadow or a tree. It was so out of. So I'm going here to the tree in the bush. It wasn't practical, you see. And then. You mentioned relationships, family, you know, one stick can be broken, but five can't. And all the things I've been preaching about, love and trust and serving one another and enthusiasm, and, uh, you encapsulated just a lot of nice things. And, and how it was an alternative. And then we've all experienced that. There was things in our life, but it wasn't not enough. We wanted more. And so now we have purpose, and now we have family, and, and again, the exoticness. Beautiful sorrows. Uh, okay. How about you? Hare Krishna. I was born in devotional uh, family. In what? Devotional family. So I was born in a devotee and I was born. So I continue to <laughs> my uh, way to serve Krishna from childhood. And where was that? It was in Ukraine. 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 Oh. Ukraine. Yeah, I, I was studying in Urugu and Moscow and had a lot of uh, connection with uh, different uh, sadhu. So well, I'm very interested to, to be here. Yeah, well, I'm glad you're here. Right now, I'm safe. Yeah, I love when I went there. I have a beautiful photo at the Black Sea of a devotee in the sunlight. Yeah. I'm glad you said Do you feel, does you feel all right of saying what you like about Krishna consciousness? <laughs> if you're too shy, you don't have to. Okay. Your smile is enough. <laughs> See, that's a good quality. Shyness, like rather running. Prabhupada said about people in general, uh, 
Empty bowl makes the most sound. Full bowl is silent. So I asked the devotee, uh, what about that? He said, I'm filling my bowl. <laughs> so I called my, his nickname is Half Bowl. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. yeah. Uh, I adopted my philosophy. <laughs> it was Russian speaking uh, lecture preachers. Yeah, it's Lakshmi Narayana does and Tatsunov, Alderetram. I listened to the Zay. It's, I didn't read books yet, but this like Vedic fairy tales from the Lakshmi Narayana Das it was attracted very good to me. <coughs> and uh, it's uh, second reason is uh, Prasadam. <laughs> <laughs> because I was in the Ukraine, Nipro, they have lots of restaurants. And yeah, but well, a lot of devotees keep in mind it for Shadam. Yeah, this is uh, no, my Prabhupada pure time for Shadam and 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 it's it's not only instant gratification, a whole in our life, but it's something to honor from Krishna. But uh, I'll tell you a, a funny Prashadam story if I may with Prabhupada. He, he, in Vrindavan, there was the Savite of the Radhajamadar temple. His name was Gurachan Goswami. He had thick glasses. He was legally blind. <coughs> he smoked beads on the veranda at the Radhajamadar temple with cigarettes. <coughs> Prabhupada said, uh, What do you think of Gurachan Goswami? And I said, Well, he's a rascal, but he's a charming rascal. I used to feed his grandson when I lived in Prabhupada's rooms, the barbarian speaking entitled, he was the coast from me, and I was the barbarian, but I used to keep anybody. I'm just placed here. Sure. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they ask for a better sound, like this laptop, okay. it's okay. closer, so... Well, I'm going to look at myself instead of you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Have you seen the movie Sarah? Yes. Yeah. So, uh, so he said, Gorishan has invited us to dinner. Would you come with me? And he took me everywhere to the vice president of India, to Bali Prashad, so he took me and Dr. Kapoor, his friend, god brother, and Samishan, and we all were there on the porch. And Gurachan, being like a family member, uh, sat down and ate with us. And Prabhupada, when he really liked Prashad, and was all his Bengali favorites, shirked up, stuck portals. Misty Doy. And so Prabhupada put his hand down like this, and he was really liking it. So all his favorite child and things. And I'm next to him. And, and Gorachan finishes, and I don't know why people smoke cigarettes after they eat anyway, but he had to have his bead. So he's blind. So he goes behind the door to have a bead, but what he did in the device, he was in front of the door. <laughs> so here he is, he's bending down like this, the smoke billowing, and I see it. So I was going to laugh, but I'm a yogi, right? But then I go to, and Prabhupada's eating like this one, the hand down, so I go like that, I tap Prabhupada on the shoulder and go like that. And Prabhupada sees it, and he bursts out laughing, so then I could laugh. And Dr. Kapoor could laugh, and Sam and, and Gorchan reaches, oh no, I'm in front of the door now. 
His stash is as beating as COVID to go out. Again, it would crowd. So, yes. Yeah, but here, I, like my soul is in misunderstanding. Your soul is misunderstanding? Yeah, why I have to eat chili for something? <laughs> <laughs> it's a problem for me. I don't know. I never eat in Krishna consciousness chili for something except India. But I came to Canada, and it's like for me, like. Because of chili peppers? Yeah. It's <laughs> for me it's going. But it's okay. I don't know. <laughs> a certain Nanda Swami used to uh, would do this joke that there was some famous movie star would become a devotee and he did a chili pepper and he goes, <laughs> Okay, and please. Krishna, so everything that was said before is true for me, but I was promised, um, I was promised by devotees to know better how to love God here. Uh, I was attracted by the stories from Srimad Bhagavatam as well. And uh, I love how this knowledge is practical. So I never knew that spirituality can be practical. Right. And I love Shiva Prabhupada for showing that. Right. This is the same thing that this brother Victor Prabhupada so you have to tolerate. <laughs> okay. I, I photograph my wife is embarrassed to self photograph in restaurants and we do think of anything. I have an online photo gallery, Flickr, 3,500 nature, Krishna consciousness, Prabhupada, old, new, events, famous people, Flickr, Roger Siegel, his name, aka Gurudas. Yes, that's a nice answer. Thank you. Please. Uh, it's also a philosophy that attracted me to Krishna consciousness, and I was trying to find answers to my questions since maybe I was 14 or 15. And as I was born in Muslim Republic in Russia, my parents were Muslim, Muslim Republic, Bashkortostan, and uh, Islam was my life native religion, so it was natural for me that I was trying to find answers there, but I couldn't, like, the, and I was studying one religion after another, and there were, uh, like, Sumati, uh, Gaurangi Mataji said there were always some hole left in the heart, so some questions were left without answers, or the answers didn't satisfy me. And then, uh, then by occasion, I came across to Shrimad Bhagavatam, and I started to read the first book, and I liked it so much. So, like, is the book only uh, even the first book was giving answers to my questions? But I was afraid. My only concern was that I might become Krishna, Krishna devotee after reading the book. And I told to myself, "Book, you read it, but you don't become Krishna. You don't become one of the, those strange people who jumping on streets and pushing you some books." But after I read. First book, I was convinced that Krishna should be a personality of Godhead, and then I found devotees in my city, and that's all. Because you drank deeper. Uh, what was your first question? Uh, my question was, who I am, was my first question, what is self, and how, uh, who is God, and how, and how is God, uh, what are his qualities, qualities of God, and the answers that Islam gave me, or Orthodox, they didn't satisfy me. I thought, like, mm, God is like that? No, <laughs> it cannot be. <laughs> and Srinivasan is so uh, poetic. When we were just reading about the cows being stolen by Brahma, and then the descriptions and how Krishna replicated even the half eaten meal, just like the gopis all had a relationship with uh, Krishna, especially at the last. 
And that the going down hill is special because the devotees could see Krishna for seven days and seven nights, and they thought they had to help him pick up the hill. That's Dasana Das. So, uh, I'd like to tell another story about what we were talking and we were all talking about. We were in a big tent at the Kumbha Mela, Prabhupada and some devotees. And uh, <clears throat> so Prabhupada said, how do you know Krishna's God? I said, well, you told us, Prabhupada. He said, they will just say I'm only man. Someone said, the Bhagavad Gita says so. They didn't just say it is a book. You know Krishna's God by the ecstasy you feel, the proof of the praise in the Haiti. Talk about practical. Why are we doing this? There's some ecstasy. It's a positive alternative. We're feeling purity in our life. So we go on. I thought this is a great answer. So let a year later in Philadelphia, we're on a walk and everybody tries to get close to Prabhupada and they're going to get close to Prabhupada and walk. But you'll see, with the first photo in this book, it's me right next to Prabhupada. Either he didn't invite me, or if I really wanted to be next to him, I had a tape recorder. <laughs> oh, Gurdas has the tape recorder. <laughs> Sometimes there's no tape. <laughs> but now I'm hanging back there and uh, Papa stops and everybody tries not to how do you know Krishna's got somebody said will you tell us Papa? They, they will just say I'm an old man so I come from behind and I said, you know, Krishna's God, the ecstasy you feel, the proof of the puddings in the eating. He doesn't like being the proof of the puddings in the eating. He says, no, Bhagavad Gita says so. <laughs> <laughs> because there were scholars on the walk. There were scholars. So time, place, and circumstance. And practicality. Right. Tie, worship Allah, but tie up your camel first. Worship God, tie up your horse. You know, be practical too. Prabhupada wanted me. One time he said, Tomorrow, Krishna, you go ask this man for something because you're very good at business, but you don't get along with anybody. Good us, you go, you get along with everybody. Go, but you don't have any business sense. I've got to do it. <laughs> okay. I can uh, come to Krishna consciousness uh, nine years ago. And once my friend invited me to, temp to go to temple. And uh, when I saw uh, Gaura and Nikai, I uh, immediately attracted them and I really want to serve them uh, and that's why I come to the temple again and again and ask uh, the Bochi to take me some service to, because I really want to serve these people. Uh, she said um, Bochi uh, taught me how to chant Hare Krishna mantra and said, well, if I want to uh, serve a deity, I have to chant Hare Krishna. Uh, and uh, after that, I can uh, serve deities. And that's why I uh, come again and again, again to the temple and uh, learn philosophy, because uh, I'm attracted to deities in the past. How did you all end up in Toronto? Why Toronto? Uh, because I'm married. Because you like it? <laughs> she married. She got married. She got married. She married. And I come to Toronto. But uh, I uh, meet uh, 
Except what Dr. Bruno Tan for. So, uh, there might be someone on the line, right? Who may want to introduce them. Okay, let's see. Right. If they can talk. Oh. Hello, guys. Uh, would you like to share your story with Prabhu? Is that person? It looks like for Sunday. Uh, well, no, just... Uh, it looks just, just like the devotee goes Sunday in San Francisco. Oh, well, maybe. That's a good sign, right? Yeah. <laughs> maybe it's really kind of needed. Yeah. <laughs> so now there's some questions. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Do, do you hear us? Yes. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. You can speak. Hi, <clears throat> Krishna. Uh, my business is, um, I guess we were sharing, uh, I couldn't hear very well from the lecture, but I guess we were sharing on how we joined the Krishna Consciousness, is that right? Yes, yes, yes. Well, over the days, but in this meeting I didn't. I've been, oh. I've been saying it over the days in the Shrima Bhagavatam classes, uh, uh, why and how I joined, is that it? What's your question? Oh, my question was, what, what, what is it uh, that I'm supposed to say? Uh, I think everyone was sharing something in the class. I couldn't really hear. Uh, yeah, so the question was about uh, what brought us to Krishna consciousness? What was our motivation? So what's your question? <laughs> <laughs> So far, it's been a diagram. What's the donkey story? That's all. What? <laughs> Sorry, I don't, I don't have a question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a question, always. Empty bowl makes the most of it. Over on the side. You are. Okay. Well, uh, shall we let him describe how he came to Christian Congress? Yes. How did you come? Because that's what I've been asking. What attracted you to Krishna? Good idea. Hare Krishna. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, so well, for me, yeah, it's pretty simple. It's a uh, philosophy. Uh, but just to give a little bit more details, uh, my first interaction with Vedas was through um, public Vedic class by uh, a devotee uh, named Torsano for our Dharadama Prabhu where he was explaining the purpose of life uh, from the very perspective that really attracted me and then I joined um, the temple for, um, for an educational course uh, going deeper into the philosophy of boxing so that really helped me uh, get established in, in the philosophy and, and the practice so, that, that's really what attracted me, basically the philosophical aspect. And of course, the, the cultural and all, and, and, and all the meanings, the philosophical explanations and, and fundamental 
um, reasons for agriculture aspect and chanting the Mahamantra. What a wonderful answer. And I was speculating three things. The exoticness of Krishna consciousness attracted people from Eastern Europe, let's say Russia, etc., Ukraine, Bulgaria, <clears throat> or the philosophy, or just getting out of the totalitarian way of life. And more people uh, say the philosophy, as you so simply, and uh, what is that? What did Prabhupada say? Philosophy without practice. Have you ever heard that one? What is it? Philosophy without practice Fanaticism. is fanaticism. Yeah, fanaticism. And practice without philosophy sentimentalism. is sentimentalism. Sentiment. Sentiment. Yes, is sentiment. So that was a great answer. Thank you. And now, would you mean, mind telling me why you came to Krishna Consciousness? The other person? Hello, Mataji. Hello, Mataji. Can you hear us? We cannot hear you yet. Can you speak? Hello, you are on mute. You need to unmute yourself, please. Okay, I found that magic button. <laughs> I think I'm not needed anywhere. Hi everyone, thank you so much for the lecture. Uh, I guess I'd like to share that uh, uh, the whole philosophy attracted me first, followed by my husband. Um, and then I just was into it uh, by realizing that you can. Uh, you can know the God, you can know the inner yourself through the service. So, like Anna said earlier about, this is a lot of practical into this. Um, same for me. Like, while doing the service, uh, you can know yourself better and uh, accept things around you the way they are. And this is just a journey that uh, fascinates me the most. And it's a wonderful, fresh, adventurous, self-realizing journey that we're all on. Also, another excellent answer. <clears throat> Again, I'm so impressed. The people from Eastern Europe were a little bit more serious about their Christian consciousness because they didn't have as much as some of the Western countries. So yes, I'm very impressed with your enthusiasm and your good choices. So, I encourage you to keep on going in this sublime way of life, again helping one another, and this way you can also give to the world to make the world a better place. Thank you very much. But if there's some questions, I'll be glad to answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you, Prabhu, for the lecture. Uh, I was wondering, so while you are one of the few, one of the small group of devotees who've been in Krishna consciousness for so many years. And I'm sure you saw a lot of interesting stuff 
outside of Krishna consciousness that might attract you. What, what, was the, what was your secret to be in Krishna consciousness for so long time? What kept you there and what let you like enhance and grow and, and preach and, and live Krishna consciousness life? Good question. The more I serve Krishna, the more blessings. If you take one step, it'll take ten. Prabhupada said, we're on the train. Prabhu means, if I call you Prabhu, when you think you're master, that's not the meaning. And so I asked him, but why do you reciprocate? with some of the problems more than others. He said, I love all my devotees equally. But I was sitting in the first class compartment. Why? And he said, because if someone serves nicely, Krishna will reciprocate. So again, there's Shastra and Sadhana and Seva. So, but from the beginning, the spontaneous aspect of Krishna consciousness after you have the rules and regulations that become a part of you, Prabhupada said, then the spontaneous. So, it's always been an adventure to me. And it can be a fun adventure. And the more fun it is, the more we really like to do it. So Krishna is all attractive, so you can, uh, so I, I do painting, I do writing, I, I do healing, I do counseling, I have a charity, I've got a garden, and a family, and a big family, and so there's been many blessings. And so I count my blessings, even though there's so many things that are detracting and making us depressed in the world. So I do have a positive alternative. And also, I interact with people in a way to give them Krishna consciousness by listening, finding out the commonality and then turning it, Prabhupada was listening to someone manufacturing buckets in India, and it was very boring, but at a certain point, Prabhupada, when he said, riveting the, the piece, the Prabhupada's eyes got big, and then he, he changed the subject to Krishna. So there's all those things, uh, and our life is so full, even when I was living in Prabhupada's rooms, there was a full day with all the things that we can do. The morning is prayers, and then, then you go out in the day and do some seva. Hopefully, the more direct it is for Krishna consciousness, the better it is for you. Something that your heart really says, not something you don't want to do because of peer pressure. What you want to do, because it's a unique and special relationship you have with Krishna, each and every one of you. So, with this, when there's so much love, then you want to give it. And so this is a blessing, going down this, this doors like this. Because people, they tell me, my, my understanding of Krishna consciousness is different. You've given us the personal aspect, the compassion, the funny aspect of Prabhupada. <clears throat> and then they say, well, and I, they feel like I'm Prabhupada. So we do me. And then, oh, you sound like back the, by the end of the evening, and the six ghost mummies. That's a joke, folks. <laughs> no way. I, I, was in, I was in one of the Baltic festivals, and the devotees from one of the Eastern, not the Czech Republic, they're funny. 
They did the flag, the Hare Krishna flag, like the Marines imitating the Marines on Iwo Jima, but they brought a cake, and I was a little heavier then, so I then we did a little kirtan, about 15 devotees, so sweet, and a cake. And I said, do I look hungry? Then they go, 15 minutes later, oh, Guru Das made jaw. Guru Das, ho, ho, Guru Das made jaw. <laughs> so, all of it, do your talents for Krishna? Talk over your, your doubts, question the individual. That keeps it going. Thank you. What qualities of Prabhupada? Uh, no, Shil Father and his disciples appreciated most and which not. Qualities of devotees that uh, of his disciples. Shiva Prabhupada uh, appreciated more or less. Qualities of devotees. Of his disciples, yes. Disciples? Uh, what qualities Srila Prabhupada appreciated or uh, appreciated the most or appreciated the less in his disciples? He didn't like gossip, he didn't like pettiness, he didn't like pretending, he didn't like show bhava, yoga. What he did like was compassion and understanding. As he did, he was so kind, we never experienced such a kind person. That's what really attracted us. You're so kind and giving and then sweet and funny and funny I'm sitting next to him and people are touching his feet. And I say, and he said, he said, he said to me, Gurudas, look how they're treating the same good persons. He didn't say me. He didn't say me. I said, is it true when people touch your feet, you have to take their karma? <laughs> and he said, yes, that's why I pat them on the head. I give it back to <laughs> So there's all these things like that. When the car horn broke in India, he said, give me my tally, give me my cane, bang, 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 and the cars were casual. He said, I think it's an American invention and try to imitate it. Uh, you looked at your watch, does that mean you had to go someplace else now? Uh, I'm not, but usually we have a prasadam at this time. Okay, well, I think we really covered a lot, and uh, I really, as my mother is Russian, I really support you all, and you can get my email if you want to keep in contact. I am approachable and can answer your questions, and I want to support you as much as you can. So, Please keep up your goodness. Thank you so much. How are you, Christian? Hare Krishna. Lost Prabhu Ki. Jai.